Christine. So hey, how, where do you want to start? <laughs> well, I'd like to start by asking you maybe how you would describe your journey of first discovering Lindsay's work. How did you yeah. get introduced to this? Well, do you know the PNWA conference? The yeah. Pacific Northwest yes, Writers I Association? Remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been a really long time since I've been with the pandemic and everything, but it, it's a good conference. Yeah. Um, and the first year I went, I went to just the bookstore first off because I wanted to see what everyone was writing. And I found one of his books and I just picked it up kind of on the fly, like random. And then I went to a class and like sat down and a guy sat next to me. And because the class had like 10 minutes before it started, I started reading the book and he went, hey, that's my book. And I went, <laughs> really? And so that's how I met Lindsay was just total coincidence. I had no idea that was going to happen. It was the beast hunter that I picked up. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then we started talking and getting to know each other. And that's how I discovered his stuff. What about you? So sort of similar story. So really? uh, I'm also in PNWA and nice. um, I met Lindsay by my very first conference, um, mm -hmm. when I went to pitch, they have these rooms where you can practice your pitches, you know, that you want to pitch <laughs> to agents and editors. And I was pitching my first book and, um, I, there was a room where we could practice pitch with other people. And I just picked the table <laughs> and nice. gave my pitch to the guys that were there. And Lindsay was one of those people yeah. at the table. And he was like, wow, that story sounds amazing. And then he pitched me, you know, what had been going on with his uh, journey at that point. And there was definitely the Beast Hunter. This was the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he told me the journey about, you know, him posting online and getting yeah, a, yeah. kind of a following and then ended up yeah, yeah. from that. And I was just amazed. He was just like very, you know, self-made and self-motivated and, um, and I was just like really impressed with him and I've yeah. so continued to read his works ever since that. Yeah. 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 I'm also so impressed with how he was able to do it by himself. Cause I know for me personally, in my writing journey, I don't want to do anything by myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I want an agent. I want some help to do it. So like anyone who does do like self-publishing stuff, I'm just always amazed with those people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, once you started reading that work, I mean, what was it that compelled you to keep reading his work? Yeah, I really, I'm a big monster person. I love <laughs> monsters, right? Like my first book's all about monsters. And so I loved just the Beast Hunter in general, right? Because all the fun monsters that he has in the whole series, you know, the hunting is really, there's some really exciting parts. I remember my favorite monster in the first book is like, I forget what it's called. It's like a fog monster that oh, like yeah. comes and like drains people. And I was just like, that is so clever. I love that. <laughs> and so I guess what really compels me to Lindsay's stuff is all his creative monsters. What about you? Um, I just love fantasy. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I don't write fantasy at all, but I love to read it. Mm -hmm. So um, I love Lindsay's work. Just, you know, there's lots of different genres he writes in, you know, yes. sci-fi type stuff and mm -hmm. kind of steampunk type stuff. Um, but it, it is very fantasy based, you know, and so yeah. I just really am drawn to that. And I like how his stories are different. I mean, there's yes. the, the Beast Hunter kind of series, but then there's yeah, other yeah. as well. And he writes some, some lovely short stories and they're, you know, across the board genre wise, they're kind of like picking from here and there. Um, and I love that. I just love not knowing what I'm going to get, you know, yeah. I know it's going to be, you know, Good. Um, yeah. based in fantasy and, and the beasts are great too. Yeah. I, I had a thought about beasts. So you're talking about that kind of mist one. Yeah, and the mist like, one. There's like a war beast and, and both yeah, beasts yeah. are very kind of amorphous. Um, but, but a lot of his beasts are more like scaled or armored or something. And yeah. I mean, that a lot of the beasts are like, hairy beast so yeah. <laughs> that makes sense I yeah, yeah. like the hairy the hairy creature is actually like a friend I would say like yeah the lopi or the borvati the lopi yeah like his, you know his yeah yeah his, you know compatriots I guess is the word and 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 I was like oh I wonder kind of where that comes from I didn't know if that 
I don't yeah. know if you had that same know. observation. But yeah, yeah, I do. It's it's funny how like with furry creatures, we see them usually as less threatening than like, you know, armored creatures or like scaly creatures, you know, like those have certain connotations to our yeah. mind. Yeah. And so like definitely like the fur creatures to me brings in like a happier mind. Like, you know, you see Monsters Inc. and I think of James P. <laughs> Sullivan. Like he's a very nice guy, but then you have Randall on the other side who's the scaly creature who's not as nice. And that's just kind of a common connotation, I guess, we put to monsters. We like assume if they have these kind of attributes, they must be this way. And Lindsay does a good job of um playing on those what we expect but I think also at the same time doing something different too because I wouldn't expect the Lopi to be that friendly towards him mm -hmm. and sometimes the armored beast like the armored leech I remember in his last book isn't the most threatening one <laughs> like sometimes his most threatening ones are a lot you know look a lot different and a lot more creative than just the classic monster moles mm -hmm. that you can fit them in yeah yeah <laughs> Well, what kind of impact do you think his stories have had on you, if any? Well, yeah, I really like his stories. And I think more of the impact on me has been Lindsay himself. Like, I just love Lindsay as a person. He's yeah. an amazing <laughs> dude. And he's helped me so much on my writing journey, too, right? Like, right now, we're working together on a book. At least he's editing it for me. And so we're, like, collaborating a lot. And just he's taught me so much about writing. And yeah. so I feel like the impact has been more of Lindsay himself on me. But what about you? I, you know, I would have to say the same, honestly. Um, I've just, you know, enjoyed having him as kind of a writer friend and somebody that mm -hmm. we um, connect with and can talk about, you know, the craft yeah. of writing and um, encourage each other. Yeah. And we've been doing a lot of... Um, uh, writing, um, uh, writing sprints, I guess, you know, like half cool. hour writing sprints together cool. by, by zoom That's cool. over the last couple of years, um, as oh. part of his writing community, um, yeah. he has kind of a fan community and he's kind of a writer yeah. community. And so when things really hit with COVID, um, and I couldn't get together with my normal writing groups. I like to mm -hmm. do meetups where you'd meet people in coffee shops and sit and write together yeah, and talk yeah, yeah. About your stories or, you know, go to conferences like we talked about for PNWA. And like that all went away with COVID. And Lindsay kind of stepped up and said, like, I want to create a forum where like people can dial in and do this together and kind of be in it together still, yeah. but remotely. And so he's been a real rock for me and in, in kind of helping connect me yeah. with him and other writers um yeah and just to still feel like you're still getting those creative juices flowing yeah you know? yeah I really like that because yeah. I agree I love writing with other people <laughs> yeah but I haven't been able to do that as much with everything so yeah it's nice to have that kind of community mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think his stories have still had an impact on me. Yeah. Like I said, I just love uh, fantasy. I feel like the the inner lives of these characters are now living in my head as well. Um, I think a lot about like uh, it, his journey, you know, Kelton Moore I'm talking about mm -hmm. and, yeah. and the like the love interest Elaine, like that, that, that kind Elaine. of played around in my head for a while. And nice. And when we would connect, I would say like, well, are, are they ever going to get together? <laughs> like what's happening? Like, I'm waiting for this, you know? So it's like, those stories are still alive for me, you know? Yeah. So I, that says something about the writing and, and yeah. um, how the characters have been crafted where I care yeah. about them yeah. and I care about their future and what's going to happen to these characters. Yeah. And so I think that's an important part of storytelling is like yeah. how, how love likable are these characters, you know, yeah. even when they're flawed characters, how yeah, much yeah. do you want to be in their company? Yeah. I, I agree with that. Some of my favorite things about Lindsay's story is like the action scene. And so I remember when I read his second book at the very end, I forget what the beast is called, but it's like in a ch church and the beast is in a church. Mm -hmm. And that scene stuck with me for a really long time. I could really see that and see the monster. And I just was like, 
that was a great scene. And so I also <laughs> really love the characters and stuff, but I also love his action sequences too. Like, I guess for me as a reader too, I'm really attracted to action and like excitement. And so those scenes, like, especially that one in the church at the very end, that was like, that was amazing. So that's what sticks <laughs> in my head usually afterwards. Well, I was going to ask you when you pick up one of Lindsay's books, like, what are you most looking forward to that you know you're going to find? Is it yeah. the action? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely like the fights between Kelton and the monsters, right? Uh -huh. Like, I, of course, love the characters and I love J-Lock. J-Lock's like my favorite character. Yeah. Silly. Like, <laughs> I was like, I love you, J-Lock. I'm always looking forward <laughs> to seeing what J-Lock's doing. Um, but yeah, those action scenes always really compare tell me and yeah. especially like the climaxes usually I think are just so exciting and I'm just looking so forward to getting to that point that I just breeze through the whole book what about you so it's like I enjoy the action action scenes yeah, I yeah. enjoy all the the monsters and everything but I really like I'm a hopeless romantic I guess so no, I love right. that kind of you know <laughs> that long distance romance kind of a will they won't they you know yeah. that kind of yeah, a yeah, like yeah. That inner life you know that longing. So I'm always looking for that thread in the story and, yeah. and hoping that this time they're going to, you know, figure <laughs> something out. <and> like, <laughs> but yeah, I feel like whatever book you pick up, the characters are going to have, you know, a rich inner life, but they're also going to have these more extreme external conflicts, you know, yeah, that yeah. Man versus nature or mm -hmm sometimes man versus beast I don't know if you, you know consider that nature but you know or man versus man you know yeah yeah, um, yeah. but there's always going to be the external conflicts and the internal conflicts I think he does that well you know yeah. when he gets both of those, yeah. those aspects of the character which I really funny. agree if, can you remember a time when um reading one of Lindsay's stories kind of helped you through something difficult in your life or really kind of spoke to you in a moment of your life where you felt like oh this is the read that I needed to have yeah yeah um I think more for me it goes to he has this fan contest every year that's like you know a drawing contest the art right contest, the art yeah. contest <laughs> I really like drawing I find drawing very therapeutic to me and so like, I don't know if I'll ever become a professional illustrator, but that's beside the point. I just really like drawing. And so every time he has that fan art contest, I'm always really excited to sit down and draw some of these characters. I find that very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And at this moment, I can't think of like a really hard time when I needed that, but it's just always very therapeutic to me to draw like his characters. But what about you? Do you ever have a moment? Like, I can't think of a specific moment where like one of the books was like, this was the medicine I needed. I mean, I've always enjoyed yeah, yeah. them, you know, because yeah, yeah. I just love that fantasy outlet. So it's always yeah. been fulfilling in that way. Yeah. But I also do love that he offers that kind of outlet for fans to do that fan art, you know? Yeah. Um, and, um, I also always think I'm going to do it. <laughs> I used to love to draw. And like this year I got pretty close. I got like a nice drawing pad and some pencils yeah, yeah. and, you know, mm -hmm. eraser. I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to do it. And yeah. I like started sketching things out, but things just got too crazy and I couldn't do it, but I've got the idea for next year. <laughs> That's right. It'll I still apply. It. Yeah, I like that he's always kind of like reaching out to his fans in mm -hmm. different ways, you know, and keeping them engaged and keeping them talking about the stories and the characters, yeah. the yeah. aspects of, of his writing, you know, yeah, it's really fun. Not a lot of authors, I think, take the time to really engage no. their, their readers this way. Yeah. So he's yeah. really good at engaging them in several ways. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think he is. Yeah. Yeah. Is there um, anything that Lindsay has planned for future that you know of, future books or future storylines that you're excited about? Well, I'm always excited for the next Kelton Moore book. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for, I know he's working on Kelton Moore 4 and I'm like super excited for it. I also know he's having another short story collection come out, which I'm mm -hmm. excited for because I read his other short story collection recently and I thought it was really good. So I'm really excited to see what other short stories he has written. Yeah, I hear one of them is going to be like kind of Lovecraftian. Nice. So I, want to I love Lovecraft. <laughs> I am kind oh, of boy, I love craft. 
<laughs> I'd certainly like to read that. Um, yeah. And also, you know, like I said, I'm still looking for that, you know, love connection between Elton and Elaine. Is it going to happen? Me too. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> Uh, so looking forward to that as well. Um, okay. but I know he's got other, other things in the works and another book that's completely a different kind of genre and feel yeah. that, um, I've only heard mention of, and, and I, one of these days would very much like to read it. So it'll <laughs> one of these super secret pr- side projects. Exactly. It'll yeah. happen. It'll happen. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for taking some time to chat with me today. Of course. Thank you for having me. And uh, (laughs) connect with another fan. Yeah, it is. It was so nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you too. And I hope if we ever go to PNWA conference again, we can see each other there. Oh, in in person. In person, that'd be nice. (laughs) Maybe even without masks. Uh, That'd be amazing. amazing. (laughs) (laughs) I look forward to it. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I hope you have a good day. Too. Okay. Bye. Bye.